Nice third gen Supra. Nineteen ninety one BMW E thirty one eight fifty I V twelve sold for around one hundred and one thousand US dollars in nineteen ninety one and adjusted for inflation to $186,000 in 2018, this was BMW's answer to the Ferrari 348. A car for the guy who leaves a rose petal pathway for his one night stands that leads right out the front door. A subdued, long distance 2 plus 2 GT car that was screw you fast, but when you look at the numbers, you wouldn't think so. The M70 B50 5-liter 60-degree single overhead cam V12 made 300 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 330 pound-feet of torque at 4,100 RPM. In a world of sloppy mechanical, don't BS me, 500 horsepower junkyard turbo LS builds, getting only 300 horsepower for a six-figure price tag feels like a ripoff. But your butt dyno tells you otherwise because of the long gearing of BMW ZF 4HP 2.4 4 speed auto. BMW 850i. A car for the man driving across two states to get that good side piece. When you grow up spending your Saturdays rolling for persuasion in the basement of Mark Blumbach's dad's house, you deserve a BMW, goddammit. So you go into finance once you get out of high school, and once the acne's cleared, and before you know it, you've got a wife named Claire, and a secretary named Deborah, but it's spelled Debroa. Because of course it is. It's 1991, and Terminator 2 is in theaters. A pound of bacon costs $1.95, and blood sugar sex magic by the Chili Peppers drop the same goddamn day. Oh, you want your steak medium rare? Well, you're getting it medium raw. 850i. This car flops around a lot. It's a big, soft GT Cruiser, even though it looks like a taut 80s racer. Maybe it has thin sway bars. It's easy to make wobble. Y you know, you can take the steering wheel and go, ha -ga 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 -ga, and the car will go, <laughs> it's made to be comfortable with interior amenities including 90s climate control and electric seats and enough muffling to shut the m70 v12 up so cameron the owner put on a magnaflow exhaust so you could hear the damn thing listen i don't know it doesn't make much of a difference but oh if i mash it yeah but it'll kind of hold it in third more yeah hold the gears. but like the toyota century yeah yeah you can take away mufflers but it's still a medium-small displacement V12. They sound smooth, naturally. Cameron moved to the US from Australia, and after he began living here, he would look for things that weren't the norm in Australia, and eventually remembered the 8 Series. Despite his research reflecting a reputation for unreliability, Cameron has mileage well into the six figures with this 850i, no real issues. All he's done is preventative maintenance, like changing the water pump and suspension components, said, you know, like tie rod ends, bushings, that sort of stuff. He also installed a walk or even, you can even call it the Woke, <laughs> W-O-K-K-E, V2 chipset, which gives a 10% gain across the board, better throttle response, and removes the 155 mile an hour speed limiter. Bimmer forms claim that with the limiter removed, the 850i has an agreed upon top speed of 160 miles an hour. And you can get these things past 200 miles an hour if you raise the rear gearing and install a supercharger kit. Of course, Bimmer folks also like to play 7 Degrees of Kevin Bacon with the 8 Series and Formula 1. Well, you see, this is an 8 Series, and, and this is a, a, the end of the, 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 the B50, but the, but the 850 CSI has the B56, and that's the 5.6 liter V12, and then the BMW S7-2 V12 was used in, in the F1 McLaren. So? So, actually, I have an F1 engine. Uh, 
What you have is just a V12, but it's a unique design. It's two separate 2.5 liter M20 straight six engines conjoined at a 60 degree angle, along with two Matronic 1.7 ECUs, one for each cylinder. Also for redundancy, two fuel pumps, two fuel rails, two distributors, two mass airflow sensors, two crankshaft position sensors, two coolant temperature sensors, and two electronically controlled throttle bodies. But an 850i won't win against modern stoplight pastime live with big swag. This is the greatest country on earth. Pour one out for Arlie Ermey contests. But what an 850i will do is win the Speed Hunters Lincoln Highway 2AM 90 mile an hour to 130 mile an hour pull. That's what the BMW's M70 B50 V12 was made for. It's made for passing somebody who's already going 100 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour is where the V12 wakes up. At 80 miles an hour, it puts its feet on the floor. 90 miles an hour, it cracks its neck. And at 95 miles an hour is where the engine says, Oh, we're doing this? Sure, it's only 330 pound feet, but it surges up like a deep Olympic squat. How fast do you really need to go? Because Cameron's been pulled on people on the highway, and he just looks at them, and that's what he thinks in his head. Like, okay, you know, WRX guy, you're blowing your turbo at me. How far do you want to take this? How deep into three figures do you want to race? Because this V12 is just going to go and go and go and go. Higher top speed than a Tesla. We're going. How deep do you want to hang into this dick waving contest? Because I'm already in fourth gear. There's only four gears. I'm not shifting down. I'm just going to lay into it and you're going to run out of RPM. And that's how things go here. But even for all its performance, it's a strange looking car. It's very un-BMW in appearance. If you squint, it could pass for a modern sort of mid-2000s car. But there are aspects that seem so utterly random, like the two big trunk-mounted car batteries or that, or the awkward hood design for the pop-up headlights, where instead of just having cutouts that are just, <laughs> the hood makes room. No, the, we're BMW. Let's just make holes in the hood and connect it on thin strips around here. So if you get hit, on the hood or anything, you're going to bend this little strip of metal, now your hood's not going to latch. Plus, you don't spend a fortune getting a bimmer with pop-up headlights, so Marvin Matchbox can say, Nice Corvette! While a cigarette dangles limply from his cracked lips, the ash slowly overtaking the parts that are still cigarette. So you have a ratio that looks like something like a litmus test that's all alkaline. Although it didn't hit the market until the 90s, development on the 8 Series dates back to 1981 as BMW took the better part of five years getting this thing into production development. From 1986 to its debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show in September 1989, BMW set out to create a car that would not only surpass the 6 Series in overall performance, but also encourage customers to enthusiastically pay high sums for the privilege. The car went through rigorous testing, with wind tunnel tests registering a drag coefficient of 0.29, and the car also featured a new electronic drive-by-wire throttle and a multi-link rear axle. For all BMW's careful planning, it ended up detracting from the car's potential as a product mover, as the sales cratered due to a recession in the early 90s. Depending on how you look at it, it wasn't so much as the car was rejected by the public, but rather that it came out too late for the public to be able to accept it. But also, yeah, the public rejected this car. Over the course of seven years, the 850i only sold 7,232 cars, prompting BMW to completely scrap plans for an M8 high-performance variant. And although production continued until 1999, that was only in Europe. BMW killed off production in the U.S. by 1997. At the time of the 850i's death, worldwide production totaled a depressing 31,062 units. These days, for the people in the know, it's still a very expensive car, and it's become the official car of wearing your Submariner to the gym and grunting out Tony Robbins quotes as you go for your one rep max. Cold. And the question now is, does the amenities of the car and does the heritage and everything justify the price tag? Because a lot of the coded symbolism of a BMW has been rendered inert from years of car culture growing wise to the reality that BMWs are gradually becoming regular cars themselves. Sure, the nice ones are really nice. But to what extent do nice ones justify their price tag? You buy an 850i because you want to be different, but you're still practical. This is still an amazing long-distance cruiser. A night bomber. A car for driving long, flat roads well past Ohio at 2 in the morning. 
with a CD player filled with nothing but dream theater. This was a new review of an 850i from 91. And if you want to buy one, the price that you pay is a high one, don't you know? That it's so pricey, bro. Don't you know?